everyone made a mess and went home. You're such a good boy. You did what no one wants to. You're kind. My mommy said you're a good boy. In the future, I want to be... Yeah, me too. When I become something. Really? Then, when we grow up, let's... I still sometimes have dreams about this memory from childhood. Even as an adult, I can't forget it. My name's Kota Nishino. Time has passed in a flash since then. I was 22 now, and in my fourth year of college. I secured a job quickly, so I've been working since the spring. Hey, Nishino, did you set a timer for this karage? Huh? Did I not? Would I ask if you did? You're so useless. So sorry. We can just say sorry if we serve half raw karage. The one yelling at me was my senpai, Ryo Kudo. He's also in his fourth year of college. He worked fast and his customer service was great. After graduation, he was going to go full time. It was my fault for making mistakes, but he was always extra tough on me. Matsuko-san, I think you mean a fork. Also, um, this slightly ditzy person was the shop owner, Matsuko-san. I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said that Matsuko-san has made lunch for me every single day since I entered college. By the way, if you call her by her last name, she turns into a monster, so don't do it. She's currently trying to divorce her cheating husband and get as much alimony as possible. Matsuko-san, you're too nice to him. I've just wanted to take care of him since he was a customer. Maybe I am too nice. Hey, Nishino, you're in the way, so go clean out back. Thankfully, the people around me were kind to me. But, every time, Kudo-san was probably mad about it because he would make me clean out back. Thank you for today, I'll be off. I finished my shift and got ready to go home. I needed to work on my graduation thesis too. We took turns being closers, and today was Kudo-san's turn, but... Huh? Jeez, people with no common sense can't do anything right at work. You get what I'm saying, right? Oh, help. It was pretty common for me to help with closing outside of my hours. Kudo-san always leaves quickly when it's my turn. I guess I'm a newbie, but... The fryer. Take out the oil and clean it. He always made me do the hardest work. Kudo-san was hard on me, but everyone else was nice, so I was okay. A month passed, and I got used to the work. It was past 2 p.m. There usually weren't many customers at this time. Today was the same. I'm bored. Watch over the shop. Kudo-san always played with his phone and slacked off when this happened. I sighed and responded. Hello, Ko-chan. I came. I heard a familiar voice along with the customer alarm. I turned around in surprise. Momo? W welcome! It was my childhood friend, Momoko Saeki. She was two years older than me. My voice came out high-pitched from surprise. Ugh, who's that? I met up with Momo and our other friends occasionally, but I didn't think I would see her here. Are you surprised? I'm tempting at a place near here. And I started living alone. I heard that you work at a bento shop around here, so I came to see you. Man, you should have messaged me. I wanted to surprise you. You're surprised, right? I am. I'm glad to see you're well. I'm great. But cooking for myself is hard. So I'll come by sometimes. Take a bento with you. It's all made today. Want extras? You always ate a lot. I, I don't eat that much. Didn't my mom used to call you Miss Seconds? No, she didn't. Or was it Miss Extra Rice? Both are wrong. Jeez. You're nice, but you pick on me sometimes. Momo puffed up her cheeks. She would always make me go crazy with this face. Sorry, sorry. My bad. Mm -hmm. 
mind. I'll forgive you. So let's go to the park again sometime. Like the old days. Sure, sure. I'll bring bentos. This is the girl I'll dream about sometimes. My heart skipped a beat at her invitation. Ahem. Ahem. I guess we were being too loud. Kudosan was looking over at us from the kitchen with a smile. Oh, what is he gonna say? I thought he was mad. He gestured for me to come over. Uh, sorry, Momo. Wait here. I entered the kitchen and Kudosan whispered to me. Do you know her? She's of age, right? Uh, yes, she's older, but we are childhood friends. Seriously? Okay, introduce me, right now. Huh? I always see her on my way to school, and she's my type exactly. So lucky I run into her here. Um, this is my senpai, Kudo-san. I say senpai, but we're in the same year of college. Nice to meet you, I'm Ryo Kudo. The best one at this job! Remember that! Kudo-san introduced himself with embellishments, but Momo's reaction was so-so. What a coincidence! I've seen you around and always thought you were cute! Come by whenever, I'll always give you something extra. Momo smiled weakly and tried to leave, but she turned around. She gestured for me to squat down, so I lowered myself. Congrats on your new job! <laughs> Ugh. Momo laughed sneakily. She had told me over the phone, but man, that got me. Momo left happily. Kudo-san glared at me like I was his biggest enemy. Momo started to come by the shop from time to time. Oh? She's here again? She's your girlfriend, right? You guys look great. No, no, just a childhood friend. Oh my, acting shy. Matsuko-san, don't tease him. Nishino's face is all red. This is Asuka Kida, an employee. Her face is beautiful, but she talks like a middle-aged man. Momo comes by when Matsuko-san and Kita-san are here, so they both got to know her face. You can't call her by her name, by the way. She falls in love. Uh, what? Kita-san? You've been smiling weird. What? As long as you do your work, I won't bother the youngins. <laughs> Welcome! Welcome! You came for me! Thank you! As soon as it was Momo's turn, Kudo-san jumped in. He was just chopping cabbages. He's fast. I'll take care of you since I've been here longer. Nishino, go to storage and get more chopsticks. Momo looked concerned. I gestured sorry and headed to storage. Kudo-san's obvious flirting escalated, and he was meaner to me too. Why are you so damn slow? Momo-chan is waiting. This is why it's such an inconvenience to have you, you slacker. He always starts yelling loudly when Momo comes. I think he wants to show off how good he is at his job by putting me down. Kudo-kun is tough. Nishino-kun, your attention to detail is your strength. Yeah, I haven't waited at all, so don't worry, Kochan. Thank you, Matsuko-san, Momo. You always go easy on him. That's why he stays useless. He's not useless. He works hard even when people aren't watching. He's an unsound hero. Um, that's not right. I think you mean unsung hero. Kudo, your methods are not manly. What? what Are you jealous because I only look at Momoko-chan? You're pretty cute, asuka -sa Oh no. Kita-san falls for anyone that calls her by her first name. Kudo-san was sweating, but... Wow. You're the first person that's called being by my name? And I didn't fall for it. Huh? What? whatever Damn it. Why? Nishino, 
Don't worry about Kudo. Th thank you, Askasa. Oh no. I love you. Why? Kudo san and I both let out a scream. Momoko san, sorry that Nishino is always embarrassing himself. I'll take care of you since I've been here longer. Whenever Momo came by, Kudo san served her. He saw me as an obstacle. Nishino, bento containers from storage. Nishino, take the bentos to the police station. He ordered me around endlessly. I couldn't talk to Momo at all. You pack so slowly. How long are you gonna make them wait? Sorry about our slow part-timer. Kudo-san got irritated when Momo didn't come and took it out on me. Oh wait, this young man always works hard, so be nice to him. This woman was regular. She always spoke kindly to me when she came. Because of people like this, I was able to continue working here. But there was one thing. Kudo-san had always slacked off when it was just us. Recently, he's been making bentos that no one ordered. Kudo-san, what are you doing? Momokuche might come. I want to talk to her. But I want her to eat my bentos too. So, the genius that I am. I can just have all the different bentos prepared in advance. Momo always orders one bento. What are you gonna do with the rest? Just give them out to other customers. We pride ourselves in freshly made. That's not fair to the customers. You can just do as I say, coward. Don't snitch, all right? If the shop suffers, the others will suffer, okay? <sighs> Kudo-san hid all the other bentos. I just couldn't bring myself to serve those bentos. Kudo-san couldn't deal with that. So when that happened, he always came out front. We recommend the curry bento or the barbecue bento today. I'm just as bad for pretending not to know that he's pushing leftover bentos. I felt guilty towards the customers and kind people. It, is something bothering you? Kudo's been sneaking around the back recently. Kira-san was sharp. She had noticed Kudo's suspicious movements and my gloomy expressions. Kira-san, can we talk? She must have realized this was serious. We went out back and she heard me out. Momo always came by on Sunday afternoons. Kudo-san always scheduled his shift then. Sundays were busy, so Matsuko-san and Kira-san were there too. Nishino, I'm gonna make all the bentos again. You prep the ingredients. Don't get caught. I can't. Actually, I won't. Huh? This is an order from your senpai. I'm gonna be full-time in April. I still won't. Kudo-san, you're wrong. This shop is built upon all of its customers. You shouldn't betray them. I stated my intentions clearly. Kudo-san wasn't one to have an open mind. Tch! You're useless and dumb! I don't want to look at you. Go clean out back. I started sweating as I cleaned. It felt good to move around. Kochan. I turned around. It was Momo. Sorry, I came to see you. Kochan, you've been struggling. What? No, it's nothing. You're overreacting. Don't lie. Momo stared straight at me. My heart skipped a beat. Every time I come, you get sent away. Is that other guy involved? I've only seen you from afar recently. I noticed that you looked lifeless. Or... Do you not like when I come? You've been avoiding me? No, no, Momo. Um, my senpai, Kudo-san. What about me? I didn't notice he had come. Kudo-san was glaring at me. What about me? You get sent away because you're useless. It's not fair to blame others for that. Useless, dumb, and a cheater. Trifecta. You are want to talk after underestimating all the customers for personal reasons? Momo, sorry. I was really happy you were coming by. I like that. What do you mean you liked it? All you can do is clean and stuff. Momo-chan's your childhood friend. She must know. Leave this guy and date me. Childhood friend. 
You're right. We're old friends, so I know him well. He always works hard and takes care of people. He does what no one else wants to do. Th that's when he was a kid. Here, look at him now. Getting yelled at by someone his age. A useless wage thief. I don't know where he's going after graduating, but I bet he can't get a proper job if he's working part-time like this right now. I'm already set. I'll be in management in April. Let's go out. Huh? Ko-chan? You didn't tell him? That you got love securities. What? Love securities? Like the foreign affiliated one? That one? Yes. I wanted to be a man fit for Momo, so I had started looking for jobs early. I interned in the summer of my third year. I moved on to final selections in January and received an offer in March. Why didn't you say anything? Huh? Were you looking down on me? You didn't ask, so I didn't say. I told Matsukusa and Kita-san because they asked. Nishino-kun, the shop's getting busy. I left a shocked Kudo-san and went inside. Momo, let's go out next weekend. Or the park. I called out to her before I closed the door, and Momo smiled and nodded. A few days later, I was making bentos next to Kudo-san. Just because you have a job lined up, don't get cocky. Momoko-chan will see how good I am soon enough. You really have no regrets. He had made all the bentos before I started my shift. Momo came in, bought one bento, and left. She was smiling today. Welcome! A few hours later, a customer came. As far as I knew, it was his first time here. Karage, tonkatsu, seaweed, barbecue! Everything is quick! Kuro-san listed off all the bentos he had made for Momo. I'll have the tonkatsu bento then. Thank you! Here you are! I haven't waited at all. Is it possible to fry tonkatsu this quickly? Excuse me. The customer opened up the bento. I see. What do you mean? I'm from the headquarters. We've been receiving a lot of complaints from customers that bought cold bentos here. We received info from an employee here the other day. I came to check. Kuro-san went pale. He lifted up the tonkatsu with some chopsticks. The outside was soaked with the water from the cabbage. Did you make this? N no it was Nishino! Kuro-san looked at me for help. So you are Nishino-kun. Thank you for reporting to us. This bento... this is it? He asked. I nodded. I'm sorry. I couldn't stop him even though I knew. You betrayed me! You're an accomplice! Stop that! He felt guilty, so he reported it. I had admitted it all to Kita-san that day. Thank you for letting me know. It must have been hard. Leave the rest to me. After I told her, Kita-san did some fact-checking and reported to the main office. I heard from one of her trusted employees. You can do the work, but you seem to do a lot of things without permission. We'll discuss what happens from here. Wait for a call. Kuro-san fell silent and sat down on the spot. You! How dare you come here! I'm gonna divorce you for sure! Ow! Matsuko-san's shoe came whizzing by. Matsuko-san's husband had come to the shop to beg for mercy. The shoe she threw at him hit Kuro-san. Kudo-san remained motionless on the shop floor for a while. March. Everyone gathered around to see me off. Kudo-san wasn't here. Oh wait, where's the other guy? Kudo-san's full-time offer was rescinded, and he quit. He's been looking for a new job, but still hasn't found one. His antics at the bento shop spread around town, and no one wants to hire him. It was short, but thank you all so much. I'm sad. Being hot and cold to Nishina was my only purpose in life. Uh, <laughs> don't make that your purpose. Thank you, Kita-san. I'm sad too. Meeting you was a one-time-in-a-lifetime thing. 
Matsuko-san started crying, so I almost cried. Thank you, Matsuko-san. But I think it's once in a lifetime. A few months later, Momo and I were both working in our respective new environments. Are you used to the work? No, not yet. Everything takes time for me. But I guess you know that. I know it takes time, but I also know you're amazing after. And you're loved. I don't know, but yeah, I meet great people. Hey, Kochan, do you remember our promise? Hmm, we made a lot of promises. I think I remember most of them. How about the one we made when we were cleaning the trash at the park? <laughs> of course I remember. It's my most important promise. When I become something, will you be my wife? When I become something, will you be my wife? You haven't changed since then. You're still kind and just as cute. I'll become a man that can make you happy. Then, I'll propose again. Oh, but... Before you become my wife, can you be my girlfriend? I'm not anything yet, but... Of course! You're so slow, Kochan. Insisting on being grateful to others and not ignoring wrongdoings, it can turn selfish at times. I want to give back to those that support me. I want to be honest with work and people even if it takes time. If you work hard, someone will see it. Hiya hiya, it's Brittany here. Ooh, I'm so angry at this episode because ruining people's food out of petty vengeance is the worst thing ever. Food is precious. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Protect your food. <laughs> okay. Bye.